What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back here. We get to talk to Daniel James, who's going to be headlining Bellator 293 coming up here on Friday, March 31st. They're in Temecula. The fights are on Showtime. Business as usual. What's what's going on, Daniel? How are you? Man, I'm good, man. Just finished training. About to head back to uh, go to another training session for some strength and conditioning right now. Man, I, I really dig them shades. I wasn't kidding. I, I know you heard me. Um, <laughs> I love my shades and hats, man. <laughs> what, what's the brand? This is a uh, a friend of mine. He be making shades and shit. So he just like I got these off him. It's like nothing crazy. Looking slick, yeah. All right. But I do got some birds. Look, you look like you're going out for the night. You got cool shades on. You got the jacket, the puffy jacket. I, I, that, that doesn't look to me like someone that's in between workouts. I just got dressed. <laughs> nice. I just All got right. dressed, bro. You are on a nice run right now where you are beating people up. You're getting the finishes. Now you're main eventing. And prior to that, you had had a bump there where you had lost three or four. I wanted to ask you about both. What do you think happened during that little spell where you lost three or four? And then what, you did, what do you think you did to fix it where now you're on the best run of your career? You see, I lost three or four. What do you mean, three or four? The Omelechek fight, uh, Ruslan Magomedov, and Brett Martin. Brett Martin, excuse me. Those were uh, – Oh, oh. Yeah. you talk about that stuff. Oh, yeah, the uh, Brett Martin fight, that was a disqualification. I beat him up okay. the whole fight. You know what I'm saying? That was a disqualification. Um, okay. He came in overweight anyway, and um, he fired away. I can't see you guys. Can't see us. Oh, uh, you're in a full screen right yeah, now. Yeah, we're here. You're, you're you're spotlighted right now. When you when you. Oh, okay. Answer. Shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, that was a disqualification against Brett Martin. Brett, Brett Martin, uh, which I destroyed him. Um, he never fought again after that. Um, Ruslan out in Russia, out in Poland. Um, I lost that in a split decision. Um, I, 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 I got to Poland. Um, the day of weigh-ins. Um, I fought the next day. Um, I literally was like, I, no excuse, but like, the fight was one of the most boring fights I had. It was, I could, I, I wasn't myself in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he couldn't even, he couldn't, he couldn't even get the job done. He had to, he went to split decision with that. Um, Daniel Ultimate fight. Um, I fought, I lost that flight in split decision. Um, I left it to the judges, and I was just in a different country, and I left it to the judges. But after that fight, I, you know, I, um, I made that decision and said I would never lose again over here, you know. And I went four straight. I, I went straight through and won them all, won all the other fights that I had to finish on my contract. And then I came back to the U.S. and um, and kept the winning streak going, um, defeating Tyrell Fortune on Bellator in Chicago. Yeah, and all finishes. And so, basically, I guess you're really not you're not offering an excuse. Things just started to click. It was more of a mental switch, where you it said, was "I'm not going to lose, lose anymore. Uh, I'm coming out here to, to hang L's on people." Yeah, I still had that. I, I still had that um, lingering on my shoulder. Like I felt like I had a chip on my shoulder. Like I'm like, damn, I'm over here in Europe fighting, and I'm like, man, I could be in the U.S. making some moves. And I said, but you know what? I'm like. I can't. I can't. I have to say, let me stop worrying about what's over here in the U.S. Let me worry about what's in front of me, and let me take this. Let me take this fan base over here by storm. Which what I did, you know what I'm saying? Getting yeah. getting standing ovations from Poland and Russia. That's hard. Um, and then when I focus, when I start to start to focus on what was in front of me, and I say, well, only way I'm gonna win over here is if I just just basically just beat the guy up and destroy him and finish him. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I did, man. And that's what got me back over here to the USA. So I'm happy for that. No doubt. And you took out one of the tougher fighters for Bellator, Terrell Fortune. You know, statement, win, beautiful splash. Now you're rewarded with a headline bout. Um, but a lot of people maybe not didn't see you fight overseas. What would you tell people they can expect on the 31st? What's the style that Daniel James brings, other than the violence that's evident here when I look at the resume? <laughs> uh, man, I could just tell people what to expect. They expect to see a guy get in the cage and that's coming out to do his job and do what he do in a fa- in a, in a, um in an amazing fashion. And um, 
and my just just understanding my presence will be felt when I walk in the um, when I walk into the arena, walk into the hotel, walk into the cage. So they're gonna feel my presence, and I'm gonna let their presence be known when I when I finish the fight. The American Predator has some swag. I mean, you have, you ooze charisma, and Bellator does give that stage where someone can be themselves. Have you thought about maybe uh, making that? I mean, do you make the walk as a gladiator? Or have you ever thought of making the walk kind of like 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 what I was telling you, you know, like all pimped out and then boom, take everything off and, and get in and uh, get in the get inside the the cage there. You funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that, man. What you funny as shit. Well look <laughs> No man, I just want to come out as myself, man. You know uh Come out, you know what I'm saying? Just do what I do, man. You know, like, I ain't got to be nothing else, man. I'm just Daniel James. I'm just a guy that, I'm just a guy that um, walked, walked, the, walked, the, walked the American Predator to the cage. And then I just stepped to the side. I just let him take over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Well, we've covered the sport for a long time. So I've seen the Pride era, the UFC run, obviously what they've done, Strike Force, And sometimes I feel like, the fighters when they have that platform to kind of be themselves, uh, which is again, what Bellator does. It, it just helps in terms of carrying all that momentum forward. I'll give you an example. Like my, I'm going to use my brother. That's my brother there, Brian. You'll talk to him in a second, but you know, when you think of Chuck Liddell, you think of the icicles on his, on his uh, shorts or Tito Ortiz. He used to have those, the flames on his shorts or BJ Penn, like, People used to have personalities. Hoist Gracie would originally come in, you know, with the Gracie train. And so when you left the arena, you remembered their name a little bit more than now. And going back to the UFC, you know, for example, it just says Venom or Reebok. You don't even see the name until they walk by you. You know, it's just one right after the other. Bellator gives you this whole big production deal. You know, they have a stage, they have the, the stage at the top and then the beautiful ramp. And I feel like there's an opportunity there for fighters to like, express themselves if they want to you know if not i get it you're about to fight in your underwear in front of millions at home and thousands in the arena your focus is just not get your ass kicked i get that but a lot of fighters again kind of like that walk maybe a fancy robe or something that's why i was throwing it out there yeah yeah no no it's cool it's that's that's cool i like that that was kind of that was creative <laughs> you know they're mad me a shoney carter right <laughs> but um <laughs> But uh, but yeah, man, yeah, the, the the um the market, you know, and that's the name of the game, though, fellas. It's like you can win as much as you want, though. But man, at the end of the day, everybody needs to sell. Every you no, know, the company needs to make money. The company got to sell tickets. Um, the company needs a brand. They need a stock. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's that's what we do when we when we you know when we run in a business. We need something that stands out. And I'm just happy to be one of those guys that stands out. And um and I just know when I get out the cage, everybody remembers me. You know what I'm saying? And and um I, I you know the market, um being marketable, um always make sure I'm, I'm always make sure I'm um, approachable, that I'm gonna speak well with others and people and embrace others' names. I'm not an asshole. I'm just I'm just a nice guy that hands out an ass with me sometimes. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't nothing other than that. Like I know what I gotta do. They're gonna remember my name. They're going to know who I am, and I'm going to be the nice guy. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to eat ice cream with you. But, man, sometimes, sometimes I got to pass out of ass whooping, though, man. <laughs> I get it. I hear that. So, Daniel, once you're face-to-face -face with your opponent, let's say at the weigh-ins, and you stare, stare into that guy's eyes, can you tell anything by their demeanor, by the way they were walking around that week, like, what do you think's going through their head, and can you kind of pick up on on that? Yeah, man, I actually was talking about that with someone. Um, somebody just asked me that same question, and um, my answer was, "That's that's one of the that's one of my best days during fight week when I can get face to face with my opponent and look at him directly in the eyes, and I like literally can see. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. You know, I'm not saying it makes him weak because he can't look at you. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, when I'm looking at somebody in the eyes and I'm face to face with someone and um and it's just something that I feel. You know, I feel like I'm, you know, it's it's my way of uh, becoming more dominant dominant. Um 
it's my way of like looking into looking into your fucking soul, man. Like, are you really want this? Like, this shit about to happen tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you got to do, go in the mirror, slap yourself in the face, beat yourself in the head. I'm about to beat this. You know what I'm saying? Do all that. Like, know that like right now, like it's time to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like it's, it's to always look at it as a life or death situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally have to. I, I gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? And somebody gonna get hurt. And I gotta make sure I'm the one that's inflicting the pain. You know what I'm saying? So I I get all that at weigh-in. I'm more comfortable at the weigh-ins. When at the weigh-ins, I'm at my best. Daniel, so a win here would do a lot. And we're still kind of early in the year. Can you maybe forecast a little bit what you feel like you deserve after a win here? Um, after this win, I just feel like um, you know, um, um, I should be right there to get ready for a title shot. And um because um, you know everybody else behind me is behind me. Um, this fight right here, I break the top five, which I should be already. But um, I break the top five after this fight, and which that's going to put me above five, and that should put me right in line for the title shot. I know Lynn, Vass Lynn Vassell um, get the opportunity to fight Ryan Bader for the title, which is great. Great guy. Um, had a massive win on Madowski. That's good. I like him a lot. Um, but my beef ain't with him. My beef is with um. Um, not like a beef beef. It's like my beef. I want the belt that bad. Um, is with Ryan Bader. I want to fight Ryan Bader for the world title. And uh, whoever win that fight between Ryan Bader or Lynn Vassell, like I deserve to be next in line for that. And I respect the fact uh, that I have to wait my time, my turn. But the thing is, I don't wait in lines to get in the nightclub. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't trying to wait in the line right now to get the title. You know what I'm saying? So. I need to I need to get that I need to get that now. It makes sense. The money, you know what I'm saying? The the market, um bringing it to Chicago, um uh, selling out the arena, um the media, the marketing, the everything. Everybody's going to be in attendance. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be it, that'll be the most talked about and the best fight. It'll be the fight of the year. It'll, it'll be the the best matchup for the year. Daniel James versus Ryan Bader for the real title shot. You know what I'm saying? That can be the fight that he can leave and retire. Because I'm gonna take the belt. There's no point in sticking around after that. I love it. I'm pumped already. <laughs> it's gonna be a big year for you, Daniel. Hey, tell tell yeah. us growing up, what was the move at the club? Uh you slipped somebody a 20, or you know, was it just your presence? Uh, you no, don't want none of this. Like, oh, what was the move to um, get you in? The the nightclub scene in Chicago at the green light. I never wait to get in lines at clubs. I don't care what club it is, it's gonna be a whatever. So uh um, I reversed. I worked as a celebrity bodyguard for for, for uh, a few years. You know what I'm saying. So, um, hanging around with a lot of different people, and things like that, and just being a good guy, um, I was able to just you know always be in embrace. You know what I'm saying. Like man, Big D coming through. Whatever I come through with a few homies, whatever. We go in, chill, have fun, leave, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Like we was never. I never put my sit and pay pay sixty bucks to get in the party in Chicago. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. Like. No, I shouldn't have to shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I went out, I had fun, I enjoyed myself and I enjoyed people around me and then that was it. You know, and on top of that, I shouldn't be paying to get into a party when I've been a celebrity bodyguard and I've been all over the place. And then when I come to Chicago, my artist with me, we coming into the party. So I'm already doing you a favor. So the thing is, you know what I'm saying? When I come, I expect the same. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of cool just walking in. Nope. <laughs> Uh, could I get into a club if I was with you and I'm still wearing the L.A. hat, though? Yeah, you can wear sandals. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are some of the celebs that you uh, guarded? Is that something you can reveal? I'm sure some of it's public, right? Yeah, I, it's, it's well, I always I always mention Twister. Twister is a good friend of mine. So okay. I, I just read the mention Twister. I did with a lot of few other people and everything. But the thing is, I don't really talk about those guys a lot like that, like. They're in the industry and and the way things is now, it's like, you know, I don't have the privilege of guarding a few people. Uh I like to say it, but I just don't want to say it. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's a lot. But I see you guys in California, we'll talk about that. I have some great stories. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't want to just, you know, just the brand and the marketing and stuff like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just talking to Jimmy, the PR guy, and there's a chance we might be in California. That that spot you guys are fighting at pachanga is like the nicest 
casino in California, and it's about 30 minutes away from our parents. So there's a chance we might be able to dip in. Would love to meet you, and you can tell us some stories. Uh, this all reminds me of another guy from Chicago that that started guarding people and then became a fighter. You know who I'm talking about? Who? It's kind of a trick question, actually. I'm being cute here. Um, Mr. T was a bodyguard. Mr. T, yeah, Mr. T and was. And then he became yeah. Clubber Lang on, on uh, Rocky III, and, and obviously, you know, he, he won the title. Dude, I wasn't yeah. even thinking about that, man. You're right. Mr. T, yeah. Mr. T was, yeah, he was, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Hell yeah. All right. Cool. Daniel, thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it. And uh, either way, whether we see you or not, we wish you good luck on the 31st on Showtime versus Marcel Gohm. Should be a great fight. Man, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for uh, taking the time to get me on, on um, online to talk to you guys, man. I really appreciate it, though. I really do. Pleasure, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Take care. I take it easy, too.